Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Juliana and I am so excited to share this video with you. I did not even realize this is a thing people wanted to know about, but it has been the rage on TikTok. I've even seen a couple YouTube videos about it, so I am so excited to share it. I'm not saying I'm the best at this, but I have made myself some really awesome backgrounds. I'll put a few examples up right now. I love anything that's like aesthetic and artsy and it's a certain vibe i'm always changing mine up i'm so excited to show you guys how to make the perfect background that will be completely unique to you 100 percent custom i think for the majority of this video honestly i'm just gonna screen record my computer and show you guys and then i will just be talking to myself over here um, for the voiceover. A few things I wanted to mention just like right off the bat before I got into the screen recording is that there are like a few things to keep in mind when you're starting off. For me, I like to try to keep in mind a color palette I'm gonna stick to. For me, it's usually like an orangey toned one, blue toned one, or like a dusty pink tone. But if you pick a color palette from the very start, it makes it a lot easier for you when you're picking the pictures out to use. The next thing is a theme in general. So some of the themes I like to use are like travel, beaches, vacation, but it could be anything. Like if you're really into sports, go sports themed. If it's like you're really into the wilderness and getting outside and hiking, you can definitely do hiking theme. Like there are so many different themes you can pick from, just a matter of what you like best. So once you have a color and a theme, which you don't need for the record, but I'm just saying it makes it easier. Once you have a color and a theme, the last thing to think about is whether you want to integrate some of your own photos. In some of the collages I've done, I've integrated my own photos. In the one I use right now, I have a picture of like my nails and my boyfriend. Um, I think he thinks that's a little bit weird, honestly, but you know. Um, but yeah, I just wanted you to keep those three things in mind that you can integrate a color theme, a theme in general, and then like just pictures that are your own. Any pictures that aren't my own, I usually get off of Pinterest. And what I actually do anytime I'm scrolling through Pinterest is I just save all the pictures I know I'm gonna wanna use for collages in the future. Like if I'm working on a blue themed collage and a super cute pink picture comes up, I just save it for the future. All right, I think we're probably ready to get into this, so I'm gonna switch over to screen recording and I'm gonna do a voiceover so you guys know exactly what's happening. Can't wait to show you guys this and I hope it really works for you. All right, see you guys in a minute. Alrighty, so before we get into this, I just wanna quickly show you around my desktop because I am really proud of it. You guys can see my background. There's my boyfriend. That's actually a picture of my real nails. And then the rest is kinda just like a travel theme kind of. I kind of went for more of a color theme on that one. And I have the notes that match and then also over on the side you can see my folder covers which I'm going to show you guys how to make in my next video. So your first step is going to be to go up to your Apple icon in the top left corner and click about this Mac. When you go over to displays it's going to show you the pixel size of your screen. So for my 12 inch Mac it's 2304 by 1440 and that's the size back I need to make. Next, opening up Canva, that's where I do all of my collaging and editing. I click create a design and I select the custom dimensions option. Then I enter the dimensions for my laptop. So you guys can enter the dimensions for yours. All right, in a second tab, I open up Pinterest, and that's where I get all of the pictures that aren't my own pictures to use for this. And I don't actually search anything on Pinterest. I usually find the things that are in my feed are just as good as anything I could search up. And then this is where the magic happens. I just start scrolling through and looking to see if there's any pictures that I think are cute. This time, it happened to be the very first picture. I think these little cute buildings, probably in Greece, are so cute. And the way I add those in is by going to control and then copy image and then pasting them into canva all right so i just kept going picking out pictures the control button for the record is the second button in on the left hand side of the bottom row of your keyboard i would like to look at pictures and think if there's anything i would want to change about it like i looked at this one with the girl i didn't really want to have her face in my picture but i liked the words so I just cropped down that picture to be just the words and I included that into my collage. And I just start laying things out how I think they look good, but everything's really subject to change at this point because you never know when I'm going to find another picture that might fit better with something else. 
So this part's just kind of random. I go through picking out as many pictures I can find that I liked. For this particular collage, I didn't really pick a theme. There's a lot of travel related stuff in it, but there isn't any theme per se. I definitely used a lot more words than I would usually use, which is kind of interesting. All right, I'm gonna speed up this next part. It's probably not that interesting to look at me picking out pictures, but as soon as there's another step, I'm gonna stop and show you guys what you guys need to do. I just wanted to quickly mention what I'm doing here. When you add in photos, when there's already a photo there, you're gonna to need to bring the other photo forward in your thing so that you can see it on top of other images. So sometimes I bring things forward, sometimes I bring things backwards, but you can just play around with that to see what looks best for you. come across pictures I love but aren't necessarily perfect for the project I'm working on so I save them by clicking control and then save as and then whatever the image title is and then save that to my desktop to use in future collages. Once there's no more white space left, I just fine tune all the pictures. Sometimes I change their sizing, sometimes I flip them around or move them into a different position. But yeah, as soon as that's done, it's ready to be downloaded and we're ready for the next step of this. So you just head up to the top right where you have the little download icon. Click on that, click download, and it will download. Make sure you drag it to your desktop in order to save it. This isn't a super important step, but I usually just change the name of my design so that it's easier to search on my computer if I lose where I put it. All right, next step is to airdrop the entire thing to my phone so I can edit it in Visco. Once you've picked the theme that you want to use and you've created your whole collage, that's when I go back in at the end and I edit in Visco. And I do that to just bring out the colors that I want to show most in the theme. Like if I'm doing a blue themed collage, when I go into Visco, I'm going to bring up all the blue tones so that it really shows what I'm trying to show. Sometimes I add grain, sometimes I bring down the, you know, the saturation or the brightness. It's totally up to you and how you want it to look but I never edit all the pictures individually. I always edit them all at the end once they're already in the collage so that everything matches really well. So first up, just go ahead and add that picture to your Visco Studio. Once it's added, I go right in and start editing and I start by doing the color tone rather than the saturation and brightness and stuff because that's easier to do at the end. So I go right into split tone and I always start on the highlights tint and I just go through looking and seeing which color looks best. So there's like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Any one can be good. It totally depends on what you like most. Sometimes I surprise myself on what color I pick, but on this occasion, I thought that the orange one, turned up to about halfway, looked best. Then I got a shadows tint and do the same thing. And in this case, I actually ended up tinting the shadows red. Once I'm happy with the colors, I go back and adjust the exposure, contrast, and saturation. 
I ended up turning the exposure down just the tiniest bit. And then I ended up turning the contrast up a tiny bit. And then finally, I turned the saturation up a tiny bit. Um, but it's totally up to you, whatever looks best, whether you want it like brighter or darker or more vibrant or less, whatever looks best. And I save that to my camera roll. And I go ahead and airdrop that back onto my computer. And then the great thing about a desktop photo is that they are so easy to install. You'll definitely have no issue. It's not really like adding folder covers, which is a lot more difficult. Adding a desktop photo is literally one click and you're done. So starting back up from exactly where we left off, after you air something to yourself, it'll be in your downloads. So I just drop it onto my desktop and I delete the old one, the unedited one, so I don't get them mixed up. Then I usually rename the new one again, so it's easier to find in case I lose it on my computer. And then we get to the point of adding it to your desktop. So if you hold down the control button, you can scroll down to set desktop picture and immediately it'll pop up on your screen. There you go. And perfect, your desktop picture is set. As I said, that's a lot easier than some of the other things you can do when you're editing a desktop. One other thing you can do is just change the color of sticky notes or anything else on your screen to match. In this case, I would change my folder covers too, just because they don't quite match my screen anymore. But yeah, you can mess around the colors of your sticky notes if that's something you use. You can always change your accent color, um, just so that your screen is a little bit more cohesive and matches. I even change the font color of my computer sometimes just to match. All right, you guys, that's it. That's how I create my custom background screensavers. I know this stuff can be a little bit more difficult if you're not super tech savvy. So if you have any issues at all, please comment down below. I would love to help you out. In general, if you just want help creating your own background, let me know, I would love to help you out. It's quarantine right now, everyone is bored. I would love to make you your own. So just let me know. You can always DM me on Instagram or whatever. Um, but that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. I am so, so appreciative of every single person who subscribes. You guys mean the world to me. Uh, and comment down below any other videos you'd like to see anytime soon. I do have a video coming out probably in the next week on folder covers, because that is a separate whole editing situation and I always make folder covers that match to my screensaver background. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that one next. It'll probably be a little bit shorter of a video, but I'm sure you guys are gonna enjoy it. Have a fantastic week. I love you guys the most and I'll see you guys in the next one.